This meeting is being recorded. All right, uh, welcome all to the next session of this uh, school. The next speaker is Wenlian Zhang from University of Illinois in Chicago, and he'll talk about the localization problem in tight closure. All right, thank you for the introduction and thank you all for coming, especially when we're competing with an excellent lecture at uh, ICM this morning. All right, so, so since the introduction of tight closure, there is one sort of persistent question. So let me just state that question first. Um, and we will try to answer that right away. So does, so tight closure commute with localization? Now, this question has been, op has been open for almost 20 years, then, um, so Holger Brenner and Paul Monsky, they answered in the negative. So it does not in general, okay? So, uh, so, <clears throat> so perhaps let me just mention their example, but I won't go into any of the details because it's highly non-trivial calculation. Okay. So this, uh, belong to Breiner and the Monsky. Okay. So set K to be the algebra closure of F2. So the field of two elements. And now we're gonna consider the following wing. So R is a hypersurface is K in four variables. And the polynomial is given by uh, z to the four plus x y z squared plus z plus y cubed z plus t times x squared and y squared. Now the ideal is generated by x to the four, y to the four, and z to the four. Now the multiplicative subset w will be given by all the non-zero polynomial in t along. Okay. Then they prove for one particular element y cubed and z cubed. Now this belongs to the tight closure after localization. However, it is not in the tight closure of I alone. So meaning after localization, the tight closure may get bigger. Okay. All right, so like I said, uh, there's a highly non-trivial calculation. Uh, there's no way I can prove this in all details. Uh, there is an excellent expository paper written by Paul Monsky, and it was self-contained and it's highly recommended. Now, instead of going through this example, uh, I'd like to focus on open problems and an idea goes into uh, some positive results. So today I want to focus on two things. So, so for today, I want to focus on regular sequence. And two, parameter ideas. Okay, so the result will be, so if an ideal is generated by regular sequence, then tight closure commutes with localization. Now the proof is not hard, but there is sort of a phenomenon I like to point it out because it will be a sort of repeating same, uh, we'll see that again on Wednesday. Now, in order to generalize the result on regular sequences, the natural candidate will be parameter ideals because the high condition, okay? Now, even just generalize regular sequences to parameter ideals, uh, people have invented new technologies. So there will be, there are actually two different approach to this. Uh, I want to discuss both. Okay? One is the phantom holop, homology and the other will be plus closure approach. Okay. All right, so that will be the plan for today. 
So let me start from the regular sequence. Okay. Now, um, so let me begin with the proposition. Let me call it proposition one. So let's say R is a Noetherian community ring with identity. Okay. And W is a multi political closed subset in R. Now part A says, now for each I do I, there exists a U, a special U in the capital W, such that the following holds. So the union of this colon I do, so this union is taken of all small w in capital W, and this turns out to be the so I to the n colon with u. Okay. So there is one special u in the w which captures this all the colon ideas. Okay. So for all n at least one. Okay. So this in some sense this is a uniform behavior. One U captures all the colons. Now, part B, by the way, in part A, I'm not assuming I is generated by any regular sequence, but in part B, I, I need that. Okay. So now let's go to characteristic P. So let's see now the characteristic of R is now P and I is generated by a regular sequence. Now, under this condition, let's say um, of say L element. Sorry, could you not immediately remove what you wrote above? Sure. Uh, yeah. What you want to do this, is it better? Yeah, yeah. And okay. are you saying that one U works for all N? Right. So or U is actually, each? U depend on I, but U is independent of N. Okay. So that's sort of a crucial part. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in part B, we are assuming now we are in characteristic P and I is generated by regular sequence of L elements. Okay. Then, so with U as in Part A, the special U in W. Now this U will capture all the colon with the Frobenius power. So this is W, take the union of all W in capital W. Now this will be I to the bracket, P to the E, colon with now U to the L plus one, then to the P to the E. So once again, a special element, u to the l plus one, both u and l are independent of e. Right? This captures all the colon between the forbidden power of i and all u, or w in capital W. This is for every e as just one. Okay? Except it's the uniform phenomenon. So one special U in your entire multi-collective set will capture all the color. Okay. Now, so in my notes, I had a proof, but then Stashner told me that this was actually assigned as an exercise in Florence uh, lecture. So I won't repeat the proof here. Okay. Instead, I'm gonna use, especially I'm gonna use part B to prove that if I have a regular sequence, then uh, tight color commutes with localization. The crucial part is this U and L, which are independent of E. All right, now to do that, I also need a easy proposition. Proposition two. So this is the general true in general. I'm going to just assume R is any no theorem. 
and W is same as before, W is just a multi-proliferative closed subset in R. All right, so the conclusion is each element, um, say C0, in W inverse R circ, meaning C0 is in W inverse R and is not in any minimal prime in the localization. This can be written as C over W, where C, the numerator, can be chosen to be in R circ, so C is not in any minimal prime. So the difference here is in W inverse R, we may have fewer minimal prime. So C naught, C zero avoids fewer minimal prime potentially. Now we want to say the numerator can be chosen to avoid all the minimal primes in R to begin with. And W in capital W. Okay. Now the proof will be an exercise. I believe Sunil Nash will present on Monday, uh, one week from now. So this is an exercise. Okay. Now, given these two propositions, now uh, we can prove uh, the theorem. So let me state it. It's not how to spell it. This was actually due to Hoxter and Huni case. Okay, so again, so R is just a no theorem when a bird community with identity. So our prime characteristic P and I is generated by a regular sequence. So let's say of L element. Then the conclusion is path closure commutes with localization. Okay. All right. Uh, so given the two propositions, now let's uh, prove it. Because tidal closure is persistent, so only one inclusion is needed because so the tidal closure after localization is potentially bigger. Um, so suffices to show Now let's pick on any element in the type closure after the localization. So say uh, Z over say V is in the type closure after localization. Okay. So here Z is in R and V is in W. Okay. So that means just by definition, There exists a C0 in dub inverse R circ such that, okay, I'm just repeating the definition here, such that C0 times Z over V to the P to the E, this is contained in I to the bracket P to the E in W inverse R. Now I may write, so by proposition two, so we may write, so C zero as C over little w, because I want to put everything back to R, okay? And C zero to begin with only avoid the minimal prime that does not meet w, 
I want to see that in R third, meaning C is not in any middle prime of R. Okay? All right. So now I can collect everything that's in W to call it WE. So then there exists a WE in W, depend on E, okay? such that. C times W E, then Z to the P to the E, E is actually contained in I to the bracket P, and this all happen in R now. Okay. Again, I look at this inclusion, then I collect everything that's in W, put them together, I call it W E. This highly depends on E. Okay. Now, the first proposition tells me that I can replace this WE by something that's uniform, or at least that's controllable. So now by proposition one, we can replace WE by U to the L plus one to the P to the E. Because W, so, or predominantly, I'm looking at a colon ID. That colon ID is I to the bracket P to the E colon with W E. That will be the U in the union over all W of the colon ID I to the bracket P to the E colon with W. And the proposition said, okay, there's one very special U that captures all the colon and that is U to the L plus one to the P to the E. All right. Now, so, that means IE C times U to the L plus one to the P to the E times Z to the P to the E is in IE. So this tells me, because C is not in any minimal prime, now tells me U to the L E times Z is in the tight closure of I just by definition of tight closure. But U is in W. So that means my Z is actually in W inverse I star. Of course, I still have a denominator V to find around because V is invertible in the localization, so it doesn't really play a role. So that shows, so this means Z, the element we begin with Z over V must be in the localization of charge flow. So that proves uh, the theorem. All right, so any question on this? All right, so there is a point I'm trying to make here. So the proof is not hard, you can see. But there's a very crucial step. The crucial step is here. I replace something that is highly dependent on E, which is WE. W come from a fact, I need to look at this inclusion on the top and crack everything that's in W to create the WE. So this WE a priori is not really controllable. I don't know how it depends on it. However, the proposition one enables us to replace WE with something as more desirable or more controllable is a very special U to the L plus one which is not dependent on E at all, then to the P to the E. Okay. Meaning we're replacing something that's not highly dependent on E by something that's linear with respect to P to the E. And that coefficient is independent of E. Right. So on Wednesday, we'll come back to a very similar phenomenon again. So whenever you can replace something that highly dependent on E with something that's say linear with respect to E, uh, then you, you have a nice zero lying around somewhere. That's the point I'm trying to make. All right. So any question on the regular sequence uh, part? Uh, if not, um, I want to move on to parameter ideals, uh, which it turned out to be much harder. But at least I, I like to mention 
uh, the technologies people invented to extend this to parameter ideas. Now, there are at least two different approaches. So two, Approach to extend this to parameter ideas. Okay, so one was done by Karen Smith, and which was using plus code, which I'll define in a moment. And two, this so is. Let me call it phantom homology, or I can say finite phantom projective dimension, but uh, a phantom homology. Okay. By uh, Ian Abraham, uh, Mouse Boxer, and uh, Craig Hume. Right. So let me mention the plus closure approach first. So this will be the plus closure. So maybe I'll, let me define it. All right, let's say, so R is an integral domain. Oh, by the, so from now on, uh, in order to somehow tone down tacticality, uh, if it's easier for you to understand, you can always assume your R is a complete local domain, which is finite. Because the heart of the problem is actually in this situation. So I don't want to mention too much about local, locally excellent and so on condition. Uh, if we focus too much on the leaf, we may actually lose sight on the forest. So it is okay from now on to assume your R is a complete local domain, which is finite. All right, so R is an integral domain. I is an ideal in R. So we say, so, an element R is in the plus closure. Uh, I'm okay. So I plus of I if R belong to, if we go all the way to R plus. So by now, I believe we all know what R plus is especially after Thomas and Gennady's lecture. Right? They, at least Gennady proved that R plus is a Bicromacal algebra in character T. Right? This is the integral closure of your R in the algebra closure of the fashion field of R. Right? Or an alternative way to see it is R is in the plus closure of I even only if there is a module finite extension S such that R belong to I in S. If you go all the way to S, then that's fine. But of course, S is only module finite, okay? for one element at a time. So S depends on R. All right, so what's the connection between plus closure and tight closure? So let me make um, maybe two remarks. One is, of course, I need now assume character P in order to talk about part closure. Okay. So plus closure is always, always contained in the type closure. Now here is sort of one way to see it. Okay. So let's say R is in plus closure. So that tells me there exists a module finite extension. So R in S such that I, uh, R. so R even, even I once away pass to S. Now, of course, because R is in IS, that tells me R to the P to the E 
will be contained in the forbidden power of I, of course, they should happen in S. So now if I apply any R linear map from S to R, so for any, R to the E, this must belong to R, but this is containing the forbidden power of I because my phi is R linear and I the forbidden power of I is in R. Okay, that's the right hand side. Now what happened to the left hand side? This so because it's R linear, so this is phi of one times R to the P to the E. Now my phi is independent of E. So as long as I can convince you there is a phi such that phi of one is not zero, uh, then this will be the equation to show us R is in the type closure, right? So now all I need to do is convince you that I can find a phi such that phi one is not zero. Now to do that, so consider the evaluation map from this entire harm set back to R. So for every phi, I evaluate phi at one. Okay, that's R linear map. So the goal is to show this map non-zero. But if it's non-zero after localization, so it cannot be zero to begin with. So all we need to do is to pass to K, the field of fraction of R. This is a localization and S is a module finite. So harm commutes with localization. That's crucial here. And that's why I'm not doing R plot directly. I'm doing a module finite extension. Once we pass to the field of fractions, then this is just a vector space argument. Of course, this is non-zero because I have a projection. Because localization of S now turn into a K vector space. Of course, I have projection and which cannot be zero. So that's, that's our argument here. So any question on this part? So the upshot is plus closure is actually contained in the touch closure. Now, the second part of the remark is uh, plus closure commutes with localization. More like because R plus commutes with localization, but I'll leave this as an exercise. Okay. All right, now given this to, let me mention Karen the theorem. This was due to Karen Smith. Okay. Like I said, I'm gonna assume this is a complete local domain, but if you look at the original statement, it, you only require your ring to be locally excellent domain. Okay. Nevertheless, so, and the characteristic is P. Then for every parameter I do, I, the plus closure agrees with touch closure. Now, because plus closure commutes with localization, then this show for all prime ideal, tight closure also commutes with localization. So this is one way to extend the result on regular sequence to prime ideals using plus closure. Now, this is a highly non-trivial result. I won't be able to present the proof here, but the idea was somehow already presented by Thomas. So let me mention that. So the, the one crucial ingredient is the following. 
you consider the charge flow is zero in the top local homology of R, then you show this is the same as the plus closure of zero in the top local homology. Now, since this notation already mentioned, I assume cut chloral module has been defined. So I won't repeat that uh, here. But here is one exercise for you. Um, uh, let's say, take my R to be FP, that's why. Z modulo the X cube plus Y cube minus Z cube. And P is not straight. Because when P is straight, it's not the domain. And to calculate. So the time product of zero in H2, that comma Y of R. Of course, this is also a top local homology module because the radical of x comma y is in, is the maximum value x y z, and two happen to be the dimension of the ring. Now, let me mention. So uh, I can't do the example here, but let me just at least give you a reference. So we have seen this before in the same ring. So this is again R modulo X cube plus Y cube minus Z cube. So P not three, for instance. So Z squared is actually contained in the part closure of L comma Y. Now, like I mentioned, X comma Y is a certain parameter here. So by Karen's result, this should be the same as plus closure. Right? So by definition, there should be a module finite extension such that Z squared now belong to the ideal Geneva X and comma Y in this module finite extension. But that's not easy to find what that module finite extension is. There was there is an example in Craig's CBFS notes. So this is so I'll refer you to example 7.8 in Craig's CBFS notes. When P is 13, the module finite extension was more or less constructed here. So all the necessary monic binomials were are given in that example, but it's highly non trivial So it's not easy to find the module finite extension at all. Right? So, so there's just some indication why Karen's result is highly non trivial All right, so any questions on this Karen's approach? Use plus closure to generalize regular sequences to parameterize it. All right, so if not, I'm gonna move on to the other approach uh, using phantom homology. All right, so, so let me define a phantom uh, or all the necessary notion here. All right, so here's the definition. So R is a non-serial ring in characteristic P, okay? So we have this um, passing spiral functor, F of E, okay? This, oh, uh, okay, can I use this notation? Uh, this F E lower star notation, is that okay? So this is same as R, as a abelian group, but the module structure is given by the E for Banias. So this module structure is, is P to the E's power. Okay. So this is the Paskin spiral functor. 
Meaning if I want to move the little r across all the way to the left, I have to turn into r to the p to the e. That's all there is. Because the module structure on f e lowers on r is given by its forbidden power. All right, so given this function, um, Uh, all right, this is okay. Um, all right, so let me do this again. So a complex, say C of R modules, this is called phantom. Acyclic. If the kernel of the i differential delta i from c i to c i minus one, this is contained in the tight closure. Or the image of the previous differential, so delta i plus one. Okay. This should be true for all. Well, I didn't say what C star looks like, so or C dot. So let me say this is. Uh, so C one, C zero. Because eventually I want to use the resolution. So let me say, I don't have anything in negative degree, right? And I do want this to sure that here, so for every I, at least the one. Okay. All right, so, but it turns out uh, there are complexes which are phantom acyclic, but once you apply to uh, the Preskin spiel founder to it, it's no longer phantom acyclic. So we need a notion called stable lake, phantom acyclic. Um, now, if apply the forbidden functor to C star, this is phantom. A circulate for all e at least zero. Of course, f f zero is just identical. Then this is called stable. Right? Phantom a circulate. All right, so given these notions, now we can finally define a notion of a phantom projective resolution. All right, so on R module, M has finite phantom projective Dimension if there is a stable lake quantum acyclic complex of project R modules. Let me call the C again, such that one, so H zero of C is isomorphic to M, so that is a resolution, and two, 
I don't want anything uh, inactive. Well, I want to define it. So I should. So there is an such that beyond that uh, homologic index, so L all C's are zero. So this will be a finite function. Right? So this is how we define the notion called finite um, phantom project dimension. All right, so any question on the definition itself? I know it's, uh, it's a lot to digest. All right, so let me do one sort of small example. Uh, it's just a special case of a much more general phenomenon. Um, let's just say R is K. Um, you can say X to the four cube Y, X, Y cube, then Y to the four. Okay. So we know that this is not a coin Macaulay ring. And now I can pick, say, two elements, X to the four and Y to the four, and they generate M primary ID. Okay. Now the clue complex. of these two elements on R. This is actually a phantom signal. We know that X to the four Y to the four is not regular signal. So the Kudu complex is not a signal, but it turns out to be phantom or signal. Um, you know what, I have five minutes. So let me just uh, state the main theorem, then perhaps I'll do a hand-waving proof uh, using Bacon Macaulay algebra. So here is the main theorem. Right, and this will be to Arbaba, Hoxter, and Huni here. All right, I'm gonna assume again, uh, my oversimplified assumption, this is a completable domain. Like I said, the actual hypothesis is a much, much weaker than this. Now part one is, is if I is a parameter idea, or even your I is generated by monomial in any parameters. I would just say parameter I do uh, to fit the theme of the day. Then R mod I, this has finite quantum project dimension. Okay. So that's the first part which I will do a hand waving proof in maybe in a minute or two. Now the second part relates to the localization problem. So if R mod I has finite quantum um, project dimension, then Todd closure commutable localization for this particular I. So that means W inverse I star E the same as W inverse of I star for all possible multi closed closed set of W. Okay. So if you combine the two part together, that shows uh, tight closure commutable localization for prime diagrams. Okay. So how do you prove this? I still have three minutes. So let me mention a criterion, how you can check whether a complex is phantom acyclic. Okay, this is called a phantom acyclicity criterion. It's a modification of the well-known Buxbaum-Eisenbach criterion. 
okay, maybe I won't, won't write it down. I have only two minutes. So in the in the books bomb isenbar criteria, you have two conditions. The one is a standard condition on rank, and the, the other is standard condition on depth. If you change depth to height, then you have the phantom of cyclic of cyclicity criterion. So the content is once you have a complex that satisfies the standard condition on rank, the euro condition on rank, and the condition on height, then your complex is phantom or cyclic. Okay. Now, given this criteria, now we can actually prove part one in this theorem. So here is an idea. I want to turn height into depth so I can apply the, the buxbaum eisenbach criteria. So how do I do that? I use the fact R plus is actually be a Macaulay. And in Macaulay rings, height and depth are the same. So I'm gonna pass all the way to R plus because R plus from Macaulay and I'm looking at the parameter ID. So the height condition now give me the depth condition. So now I apply Eisenbach, a Buxbaum Eisenbach criterion because now I have a depth condition. So that means once I pass to R plus, this complex is genuinely, or the Kuzu complex, for example, the Kuzu complex is genuinely a cyclic now. Now I go everything back to R that shows because plus closure contains the entire closure. For example, you can, you can generalize the notion of plus closure to the finite generate modules. So that means in your complex, all the boundaries are contained in the tile closure of the whole boundary. And that's exactly how we define phantom acyclic. That's just a very quick hand waving proof. But like I said, this is another way to generalize uh, the result on regular sequence to parameter ideas. I think my time is up, so I'll stop. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Fanyang. Are there any questions?